Everyone, hi, Bruce Mobson from Sun Ranger of Nevada, and coming at you with another video. First of all, though, I want to thank everybody for exploding and just blowing up the video we did last by Death Grips, which was just tremendous. I want to thank everybody for the comments and the viewing, and thank you, thank you, thank you. And as someone said, they respond to different comments and different artists, and that's what we did. And because of that, the artists we're going to be covering today another great, great, great performer, Denzel Curry, is because of what you guys told us that you want to hear and what you're interested in. So here we go. Denzel Curry was born, just want to go my Wikipedia cred, okay, was born in February 1995, and he's referred to as a rapper, singer, and songwriter. Uh, he's way more than that. He was raised in Carroll City, Florida, and he was rapping while he was in the sixth grade and began working on his first mixtape in 2011. Um, what are his genres? He's really multi-talented in a lot of areas because what I get out of him is hip-hop, scream rap, trap, hardcore, hip-hop, experimental hip-hop. The guy does it all. Now, this album that we're covering behind us, Taboo, uh, came about because he was in an interview where he said that he was hearing what other rappers had gone through, what people he knew was going through, what he himself had been going through, and he wanted to, you know, relay and talk about the mental, physical, and emotional struggles that people go through, you know, who are hurting. And he was hoping that this album would be almost a way for people to kind of vent and release and feel better about themselves. So there are three songs that are tied together, and we're going to cover all three because that's actually what he did in a very, very brilliant manner. And the songs right behind me, as you can see, are Black Balloons, Cloud Cobain, we'll get into that later, and Vengeance. A little bit about his life, which I find fascinating how these people have such multifaceted lives, is that he disclosed in an interview with The Breakfast Club that he was molested by a man when he was a child. He also... Um, said that, you know, it's interesting how they, they run into each other, people that, you know, you don't realize, you don't think about. It said that this, when he released um, King of the Mischievous South, Volume 1, Underground Tape, 1996, what happened? It caught the attention of fellow rapper, and we know him well, Earl Sweatshirt, and other members of the Odd Future label. So there was a connection even there that there were kindred spirits on the same level. Now, he also did a third mixtape, which was released after the death of Trayvon Martin, who also lived in Carroll City and went to the same high school as Denzel. So finally, I read this as well, on a personal level, in March 2014, he had a brother, Treon, T-R-E-O-N Johnson, who died of injuries from being tasered and pepper sprayed by police. Officers that responded to reports of Johnson throwing coconuts from a roof at a dog that had bit him, Curry has said that his brother died of an apparent cardiac arrest when he went into sepsis uh, from a freak injury after being tasered. So clearly, um, he brings a lot of emotional issues, things that he's been through into his music, and that's very, very apparent. And I picked up on that and just listening to these songs, other songs of him by as well. But in general, he's a very intuitive, very bright person and very aware of his feelings and those around him as well. Now... The first song, because there are three different songs, what I'm going to do is, which you don't normally do, I'm going to go through all the three songs fairly quickly. I want to take out little snippets, but I also want to talk about things that he said about each song and what I caught from the symbolism and the clinical analysis of looking at each one as well. The first one he did was called Black Balloons. And what you have here is the chorus is... Hot pink, valentine red, black balloons over my head, let it float, 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 let it float by me. Let it float, 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 let it float by me. Okay. So when you look at the term, why would he go with the idea of black balloons? I looked that up in Urban Dictionary, Kiara, to get definitions of what black balloons meant. It has been seen throughout history as an omen of death and destruction and of bad times to come. Whenever you say, like, there's a black cloud hanging over me, well, that refers to a balloon. There are some more recent references to black balloons. Um, there's one about using heroin as a drug usage, and also for people who are hackers, like a black balloon can disrupt networks. But generally, throughout history, whenever you see a, a, fort uh, a foretelling of black, black balloons, it means that something bad is going to happen to you. 
Interestingly enough, a band called the Goo Goo Dolls, which used to be very, very popular, released a, a, a song from their fourth album, which is actually called Black Balloons, and it was related to depression. So, um, but in general, it foretells misfortune. Now, as he's going through the video, which, and I want to say this also, I'm going to say this again several times, usually for me, the song, when I listen to the song without, because what I'll do is I'll listen to the song like five, six times without the video, if there's a video. I want to let the song and the lyrics kind of rattle around in my coconut. But this time, there was videos obviously for all three songs. I got to say, to his credit, the videos almost overshadowed the lyrics because the, the videos were just done so well, so poignant, so mesmerizing to me. The beat was powerful, the bass, it's just great songs all three of them, and the, just the symbolism of it all, I was impressed. It was almost like it overshadowed the video. I mean, I'm sorry, the lyrics, are here, which I rarely, rarely, rarely say. So, um, when he's saying that to me, let the, you know, let him float by me, it's like, let the omen of evil float by me. I don't want to be exposed to it. I want to get away from the blackness in my life. And then, as he ends the second one, he goes at the end, he goes, soon black balloons pop, let it be the day the pain stops. And he goes back to the balloons, goes back to the balloons. The balloons are so allegorical in what they foretold, what they foretell for his future. And then um, hot pink Valentine red. But if you're watching the video and it goes, let it float, let it float. Because what happens in that video is there's a tray of cocaine that comes out. And he is there talking. And once the coke comes out, what's the next step? The loss of Denzel's identity. Black balloons now, as he's dancing like this, he's dancing on top of this fake, fake, so artificial oasis. The black balloons are gigantic. They're huge. And they're holding up this whole edifice, which you realize is based on falseness and just nonsense. And now his face is now a mask of white slash cocaine and the loss of himself and who he is as a person and as an artist. So all of a sudden now, you're not seeing Denzel, you're seeing an essentially a character of Denzel. And as he's driving to this oasis, you see the black balloons over the car as he's singing that in the chorus. And even the car itself is trimmed in black, which to me again is what even he's riding and he's riding almost to his doom. He drives and drives and this amazing oasis shows up. And it seems to be held up by, you guessed it, black balloons. And it's, you know, the symbolism, again, that all of this is held up by just nothing supporting it. And black over the white, the, the, the blackness over the pureness. And notice also how he has that scene where he's sitting and he's singing that the black, that the guys in the, black, in the back are all dressed in black. Okay, the house guests are black and white. And Denzel is in red. To me, saying that, I just sold my soul. I signed the contract, and now I'm giving myself over completely. And after the change, guess what? No more red. Face is white, lips are black. He is no longer Denzel anymore. And when he looks through that telescope, now he truly is Cloud Circus. Because truly, what is this? The midway is behind them, and they are now the show to amuse others. The other person says to him, hey, what's going on? Make him happy, make him dance, make him laugh. Which is what happens when you give who you are to be something that you are not. And he does that brilliantly how he explains that. In the end, he's now fully part of the circus with his painted face and his eye and his mustache. And he doesn't even know what happened. Like all of a sudden you wake up, poof, here you are, who am I? Because I get this all the time in counseling. People say to me, like, Bruce, I don't even know how I got to this point in my life, how I felt so low. I used to be here. I used to be here. And one day I wake up and I'm living in a rat-infested, you know, dump. And I'm shooting heroin or I'm in a horrible relationship or I've, I've, I've lost all self-respect. I lost all my dignity. What happened? What happened? What happened? You gave up your dignity. You gave up yourself. You gave up who you are. And, you know, how did I even get to this level of despair? That's what you're getting with, you know, with Denzel. Like, he's looking around like, what happened? Okay, looking through that telescope, who am I? Yeah, you're, now you're seeing the new Denzel. And looking at him in the cage reminded me of that expression, a, you know, a bird in a gilded cage. You know, a bird has, it's a great cage, it's beautiful, it's incredible, 
but it's still a cage and the bird can't go anywhere. And when you step back and you flash back, what do you see? People on either side of him and people on top of him, they're also locked up. Everyone's in a cage, everyone's hurting, everyone's suffering. He's the newest addition to the circus, the prison circus, basically, but he's now like everybody else. And soon enough, he's going to be walking around in a sense of despair and having no clue who he is anymore as a person. Okay, now, um, this next song, okay, this is, you know, Cloud Cobain, and there's a lot of different reasons why he liked it, and I'm going to go into that as well. Just notice from here, what he's wearing is very, very similar to the cover art and to the actual clothes that Kurt Cobain was wearing before he committed suicide in that period of time. Now, where did the title come from? So he says that he did listen to Nirvana. He liked Nevermind, which is a very famous album from Nirvana. Because that's my favorite album. But I was making this song. I was just like, Suicidal Doors, call it Kurt Cobain. I was thinking about a car initially. Then like, Sue Leather Seats Like a Bloody Stain. I was thinking about his suicide when I was writing this song. That's how it came to flourishing and how I made the song in the first place. Then when we got done with the song, he was like, what do you want to name it? I was like, I'm not going to name it Kurt Cobain. Let's name it Cloud Cobain. Cloud Cobain. Why? Because most people want Cloud for the dumbest reason. Just to get luxury material and stuff and cars like that. And, you know, it makes sense. It's so interesting to me that he's only 24 years old, but he has a certain amount of maturity and intelligence that you don't often see with somebody that young. It's impressive how he talks. And aesthetically, the clothing Denzel is wearing on the cover art and video are eerily similar, not eerily similar to Kurt Cobain's prior to his death. He's paying homage in his own way to someone that he respected. Now, in this song, you're going to see how the drug dealer portrays how rappers are following a trend to stay popular, which is backed up by the many face tattoos in the crowd. You're going to see that. And the point of when Denzel was showcasing a gun just to stay popular. And what I liked about this, and when I'm going to the lyrics right now, is he's brilliant at how he showcases how we all get sucked in to being something that we not just to stay popular. You know, you see things like the people getting tattoos, it hurts. It, you know, it, it doesn't do anything for their facial expressions. But hey, got to do what I got to do, got to do what I got to do, got to stay popular to make people happy. And then it goes like this. He starts off on the pre-chorus. I just want to feel myself. You want me to kill myself. Man, I've been on my own. Lord, I'm going to need some help. I just want to feel myself. You want me to kill myself. Man, it's been so damn long dealing with the things I felt. He's basically saying, I'm worn out. I'm empty. I'm a shell of myself. You, the fans, life, the world, have sucked everything out of me. I have nothing left to give. I don't even know what to feel in verse one. It goes, I don't even know what to feel. They don't even know what's real. Yeah. I don't know what to know. What's the, I don't know what to feel. They don't know what's real. You know why? We're both confused. You know, when you break through that third wall, the fans and I, we don't know how to relate to each other because we can't relate to ourselves. And then why you want to take, why you want to take my soul? I'm yelling out, hell no. I can't even trust my friends. Most of them might be foes. Whoa. Everyone famous goes through this. Are you my friend or are you my friend for the fame? Who is my true friend? And I got to believe at 24, he's so, he comes across as so level-headed, Denzel. But I got to believe you go through that. You know, you know, you see the crowd cheering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it because of my fame or is it because of who I am? If I didn't have the fame, would you still be my friend? And the vast majority of time, the answer is, of course not. We're only here for the fame. <laughs> if you're not famous, but we want to hang around you. You're not anybody to us. Who is your true friend? Who is your true friend? Who is going to be with you through thick and through thin? I like this, the next two lines. He says, I stay low so my demons don't acknowledge me. When I go, I know death don't do apologies. Once you're dead, and I'll bring this up later because he made a very great comment on an on a, on a interview, death is death. Death makes no apologies. Death don't do apologies. No, it doesn't. Once you lose your life, once you're dead, there's nothing more to happen. You're just now an afterthought. And he talks about that very intelligently in a later interview, but I, I like the way he said those two lines. 
I stay low so my demons don't acknowledge me. I don't want to rise up to get sucked into things I don't want to be doing. And then he goes, um, I need hella base. I need hella pain. I need to feel something. I'm not feeling anything. And then he goes, in the pre-chorus going further, I just want to feel myself. You want me to kill myself? Man, I've been on my own. But you get to the point that nothing satisfies people and the fans anymore. Laughing at you, you're the butt of the joke. You're the joke. Ha, 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 ha. Do what we tell you to do. You lose your individuality. You lose who you are. To me, this was a brilliant setup, this song. Are you ready for the freak show? Are you ready for the circus? What a great place to lose yourself but by going to a circus where everything is illusionary. And the midway, you know, three balls for a dollar. Check out the bearded lady. Ride the Ferris wheel. Go on the roller coaster. You know, go see the two-headed uh, monkey man from, you know, New Jersey. It's all illusionary. All illusionary. And I love the way he used the circus as a way to get sucked in and really not even know who you are anymore. You're the main attraction. Notice how everyone is marked up and they're all drinking out of those styrofoam cups. And I see the color purple. And boy, I know that color. I did a video on that a few years ago. And that told me again, numb yourself, numb yourself, numb yourself. Great scene when, he, when, the, when the barker, when the, when the pitch man's feeding the audience the girl, he takes a Zanny pill and he puts it on what else? A hot dog. I mean, such a great concept. The Zanny with the hot dog. Feed it to her. And notice what the vendor's glasses were? Red. Red. Hooking people up. Xanax and the styrofoam cups. Pure evil with drug abuse. And once you sell your soul to drugs, then you're dancing to the beat of someone else. Audience is all scared and basically in a coma. They're all scarred. I'm sorry, not scared. They're all scarred because they are in a coma and can no longer think for themselves. You see the vendor with the purple and the codeine and mixing it. It just screams, keep everyone enslaved and in a stupor so no one's thinking for themselves. No one's contemplating what's wrong in life. Audience is laughing. Denzel realizes he's trapped. You have to shoot yourself to give social media even more and more and more. There's that scene where he does this. He's holding up his phone, and you can see, like, all the likes coming in and all the comments coming in. Hey, do this. Do this. I like you. I like you. I want to give you something. Hey, I like – we get so caught up in that that we don't even understand what we're doing to ourselves. What do I got to do next? 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 So what happens is you give more and more and more till you're truly empty. And then suicide seems to be a normal concept and a normal next step because of no friends, no family, and all that fame is illusionary. And at the end, what pops? That black balloon. It's all come crashing down, pop, pop. And yes, he's a huge fan of Kurt Cobain, hence the title, and a lot of the video is homage to Nirvana's song, the video, Smells Like Teen Spirit. Okay, now... Come to the last song, Vengeance. Great song. All the songs were good, but the videos were so powerful. You know, he comes back from the dead. Now he's wreaking vengeance on the person that did this to him. You know, the circus master and the record label owner. But just this. He's just laying there the first 15, 20 seconds till he springs to life. Now you know, notice now he's in red. It's the price you pay for this. There's no free ride in life. Yeah, he comes back from the dead, but he paid the ultimate price. Now, someone had a great comment, and it was a guy named the name of Foolish Duke, and he goes, all so crazy how his dead body is laying on the sidewalk, and people are just filming it, okay, with their phones. Just like what happened with Triple X. He goes, Curry's really out on a roll. But I, I thought about that. I went back to that scene several times. He's laying there. No one's rushing to help him, but they're just filming with their phone. So again, the song is great. I feel the pain, feel the rain. And he's letting you know this you know, over and over again. And the chorus is so powerful, so strong. But here's something that happened, okay? This happened on 9-18-2019. 
There was a brawl, a wild after-school brawl erupted on Monday outside a Long Island strip mall and was over a 16-year-old student was gravely wounded with a stab wound to his chest. But most of the 50 or so teenagers in Oceanside, New York, which I know about, I, I grew up not too far, not that far from there, who either took part in the fight or witnessed it, made no attempt to defend him. And then the police department said in a news conference on Tuesday, they videoed his death instead of helping him. Video footage shows Kasim collapsing to the ground as teenagers around him film his fall but do not come to his aid. The guy who made the comment before how when he was laying on the ground, no one came to help him, and then watching the video of Denzel Curry and Vengeance, who was this guy's favorite artist, one of his favorite artists, Little Peep and Triple X. Unbelievable how art is imitating life. And I just was like stunned that this video that came out, I think 2017, two years later, it leads to the death of a young man where people just are so callous, don't even care. They're just filming it. Like just, yeah, my buddy is, is bleeding out. I don't do CPR. I don't call 911. I don't try and soak up the blood. I just film it. I'm so callous. I'm so indifferent to what's going on. What are my thoughts of watching this video, videos multiple times? As I said before, this is one of the few times I can actually say the video is better than the songs, that the circus was a brilliant way to present it. It's movie quality were better. Each video feels, feeds into the next one. It's like it just goes nicely. And it screams anti-drug to me more than anything. I get a part about, you know, losing your soul, losing your presence, but there were so many anti-drug references to it that, you know, how it affects you, what it does to you, how drugs put you in a trance, using the purple, using the cocaine, just the fact that you would tattoo yourself just to be part core core to the crowd. There's no doubt that Denzel's a very talented individual multiple ways, and people made comments he could do the next Joker. From the second video, you know what? He sold me. This guy can dance, he can act, he can sing, he can do it all. What he's trying to say, what I'm trying to say, you got to get involved with your life. You just can't be a spectator. You got to do what you can to make changes. You just can't sit by and be idle. You know, my day job, my second job, my third job as a social worker, whether you like it or not, I'm a professional. I work with people in all walks of life. I got to be a professional. I got to be a professional to everyone around me. Even if I'm having a lousy day, things are not going right, I got to be the man. And every day is a struggle. I mean, when I, you know, to meet my, you know, um, agent, producer, you know, chief of everything, sometimes it's like a struggle to get here. But I do it because, A, I like making the videos. I want to, you know, knock them out. But it's a struggle to get through those days sometimes to find the time to get the stuff right, to do what you want to do. But you got to do it. You got to make an effort. I don't want my people, my people, I guess I'm, I'm being honest. I don't want to see you people that are watching these videos be on the sidelines, go forward, go forward, go forward, go forward. To Denzel's credit, he's been through a lot. Death of a brother, admitting to being molested, takes a lot of guts for people to do that. And just without his music alone, he impressed me. The music alone took it to the next level. And, you know, his death on video foretold a real death not only two years later. Also, to me, you know, I, I just I was talking to my, my agent about this, and he was talking about an interview that Denzel gave. He's very in tune to mental health issues, and he understands how death as a musician will make you more relevant. This came from Power 106. He said he went to Triple X's funeral and he met Little Peep. And he made a comment, which I thought was really very insightful. He goes, the moment you die is the moment everyone wants to acknowledge you did something for the culture. And you did something for their lives, and all of a sudden, then everyone, that didn't, he didn't say that, but then everyone wants to RIP you, or RIP about it. Great comment. 
the guy is very insightful and he's not afraid to share and that's what makes his music special to me and makes him interesting to me insightful and self-aware and in touch with his feelings and of those around him that are struggling as he said the album was really designed to help people who go through life and have a tough time to look at things and say hey i got a chance i got a future i can do things with myself that's what we want to see for everybody here when people comment we love the comments we love the cons when people tell us that they're striving that they're doing better it's a very very powerful feeling for us like our music our breakdowns helped people who were struggling to go forward. Take his music. It's brilliant. It was great. But take the message of these three songs, combine them together, understand how it relates to you, go forward with confidence, go forward with strength. You don't need drugs. You don't need the alcohol. You don't need to, you know, put on a tattoo you don't really want just to make everybody happy. And God forbid, you don't got to do this, you know, likes, 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 to take it to the next step to feel that suicidal ideation and actual suicide is the answer. Everybody hang in there, be strong, go forward. That's what we want to see. Thanks.